One of the things that um, I should be working on is uh, this paper called Booting Up the Agent. And it talks about the very earliest steps of becoming a being in this world. Kind of like you can do this for a computer, right? Be and before you switch the power on, it belongs to the domain of physics, right? It obeys the laws of physics. You switch the power on some number of, what, nanoseconds, microseconds, I don't know, later, you have a thing that, oh, look, it's taking instructions off the stack and doing them, right? So, so now you're, now it's executing an algorithm. How did you get from, from physics to executing an algorithm? Like what, 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 what was happening during the boot up exactly before it starts to run code or whatever, right? And so we can ask that same question, uh, in biology, what are the earliest steps of, uh, of becoming a being? Yeah, that's a fascinating question through embryogenesis, at which point, is the, are you booting on? Yeah, 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 exactly. Do you have a hope of an answer to that? Well, I think, I think so. I think so in, in, in two ways. Um, the first thing is just physically what, what happens. So I, I think that the, your, your first task as, uh, as a, as a being, and, and I, again, I don't think this is a binary thing. I think this is a positive feedback loop that sort of cranks on, on up, up and up. Your first task as a being coming into this world is to tell a very compelling story to your parts. As a biological, you are made of agential yeah. parts. Those parts need to be aligned, literally, into a goal they have no comprehension of. They, If you're going to move through anatomical space by means of a bunch of cells which only know physiological and um, you know uh, metabolic spaces and things like that, you are going to have to develop a model and give them... Uh, B bend their action space. You're going to have to deform their option space with signals, with uh, behavior shaping cues, with rewards and punishments, whatever you got. Your job as a as an agent is ownership of your parts, is alignment of your parts. I, I think that fundamentally is going to give rise to this, this, this ability. Now, now that also means having a boundary saying, okay, this is the stuff I control. This is me. This other stuff over here is outside world. I have to figure out. You don't know where that is, by the way. You have to figure it out. And in embryogenesis, it's really cool. You can, uh, as a as a as a grad student, I used to do this experiment with duck embryos, with a sort of flat uh, blasted disc. You can take a needle and, and put some scratches into it, and every every island you make for a while until they heal up, thinks it's the only embryo. There's nothing else around, so it becomes an embryo. And eventually, you get twins and triplets and quadruplets and things like that. But each one of them at the border, you know, they're joined. Well, where do I end, and where does where does he begin? You have to, you know, you have to know what you, what your borders are. So um, that act, that action of aligning your parts and coming to be this 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 uh, I mean I'm even going to say this emergence we we just don't have a good vocabulary for it this 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 emergence of a model that aligns all the parts is really critical to keep that thing going. There's something else that's really interesting, and uh, I was thinking about this in the context of 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 this question of like like you know these these beautiful um, kind of ideas you know that. Uh, there's there's this amazing thing that we found, and this is this is largely the work of uh, Federico Pigozzi in my group. So a couple of years ago, we saw that networks of chemicals um, can learn. They have five or six different kinds of learning that they can do. And so what I asked them to do was to calculate um, the causal emergence of those networks while they're learning. And what I mean by that is is this: if you're a rat and you learn to press a lever and get a reward. There's no individual cell that had both experiences, the cell, right? The cells at your at your paw had the, touched the lever. The cells in your gut got the delicious reward. No individual cell has that both experiences. Who owns that associative memory? Well, the rat. So that means you have to be integrated, right? If you're going to learn associative memories from different parts, you have to be an integrated agent that can do that. And so we can measure that now with metrics of causal emergence like phi and, and things like that. So we know that in order to learn, you have to have significant phi. But I wanted to ask the opposite question. What does learning do for your phi level? Does it do anything for your degree of being an agent that is more than the sum of its parts? So we trained the networks, and sure enough, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, as you train them, the, the, their, their phi goes up. Okay, And so basically what we were able to find is that there is this a uh, positive feedback loop between every time you learn something, you yeah. become more of an integrated agent. And every time you do that, it becomes easier to learn. Yeah. And so it's this- It's a virtuous cycle. It's a virtuous cycle. It's an asymmetry that points upwards for agency and intelligence. And now back to our platonic space stuff, where does that come from? 
doesn't come from evolution. You don't need to have any evolution for this. Evolution will optimize the crap out of it for sure, but you don't need evolution to have this. It doesn't come from physics. It comes from the rules of information, the causal information theory, and the behavior of networks, the, the mathematical objects. It has, it's, this is not anything that, uh, that w was, you know, was, was given to you by physics or by a history of selection. It's a free gift from math. And, the free, and, and, and those two free, gift, free uh, gifts from math lock together into a spiral that I think causes simultaneously a rise in intelligence and a rise in uh, collective agency. And I think that's just, uh, you know, that's been, you know, just, just amazing to think about.